Welcome to this talk about NM Cloud Setup and the automatic network configuration for, for Cloud VMs. Uh, I'm Benjamino Galvani. Uh, I work as a software engineer at Red Hat. And I work in the network management team, which is the team developing network manager, NM State, and the network role for Ansible. Before starting, let me do a couple of announcement. announcements. There will be a network manager community meetup at 2 p.m. in the room A112. Uh, feel free to attend if you want to discuss any topic related to Network Manager, if you want to share ideas, problems that you have, or just to listen. Uh, and there are stickers, so at the end of the talk you can grab them. Um, before explaining what an M-Class setup is and what it does, uh, let's talk a bit about public cloud networking, and in particular, uh, what makes it, makes it different from um, regular on-premise networking. The obvious difference is that the network is uh, virtualized and the topology and the configuration of this virtual network is uh, not managed by us, but it's managed by uh, the cloud provider infrastructure. Any change that we want to do to, the, to this virtual network must be done through some provider-specific API or that can be a, or a web console or CLI tool. And uh, after doing the configuration on the infrastructure side, we need also to configure the instances. Uh, however, since the configuration is already defined somewhere, it's desirable that instances can pick up this configuration uh, in an automated way uh, to save duplication of work. And uh, what do we want to configured typically on instances. Um, at least, normally at least a IP address and related routes. But in some cases, we might want to uh, have multiple uh, IP addresses um, or even multiple interfaces. And this can be useful, for example, if we want to have different uh, services, each bound the, to a different uh, IP. Uh, or if the instance is acting as a uh, network appliance, uh, such as a firewall uh, or a load balancer. And in case, it, in case there are multiple interfaces, we might want also to set up um, policy routing so that the packets, um, outgoing packets are routed via the right interface. And we want all of this to happen automatically. So which mechanism can be used for automatic network configuration? One mechanism is, uh, of course, DHCP. Um, DHCP is a protocol for um, uh, automatic network management. Uh, it's a quite old uh, RFC. Uh, in this uh, talk, I'm uh, focusing on, DHC on IPv4 because that's what NM Cloud Setup does currently. And uh, uh, in the simplest scenario that we discussed above with a single IP, the ACP is all we need. However, if there are multiple addresses, unfortunately, uh, the ACP doesn't work in that case because it only supports one address per uh, lease. So typically, the ACP is used, but only to uh, configure the first address. For everything else, we need a different mechanism, which is called IMDS, which stands for Instance Metadata Service. And it's a feature available on most cloud providers um, that allows instances to fetch various kinds of metadata, including, for example, information about the instances themselves, um, security credentials, or even network parameters. Uh, IMDS can be described as a RESTful API that is reachable via HTTP uh, at a well-known IP address. And differently from the HCP, it's not a protocol with a specification, but it's, a more, it's more of a, a general mechanism. So with DCP, you can have a client. It works everywhere. Uh, but uh, IMDS works differently in different providers. And you might have noticed that there is a problem with uh, IMDS. Uh, there's a bit of a chicken and egg problem because uh, IMDS tries to fetch network configuration over the network. So the network must be already configured. Um, however, in practice, 
that is not a problem because, as I said uh, before, initially we do DHCP, and then for everything that is not covered, we do IMDS. So let's talk now about an mTROT setup. Uh, it's a service for automatic network con configuration of uh, instances. It supports the major cloud providers, uh, including AWS, GCP, Azure, and Alibaba. Um, as the name suggests, it's uh, developed as part of the Network Manager project. Uh, network Manager, if you don't know, it's a, a network configuration service that is uh, available on many uh, Linux distributions. Uh, NMTOR setup is already enabled on uh, some cloud images. For example, if you start a rel instance on uh, AWS, NMTOR setup is already active there. And speaking about the implementation part, uh, it's written in C using glib, the GNOME library, and libnm, which is a library to talk to an M uh, via Dbus. How it works? Uh, an M Cloud Setup periodically fetches the information from the IMDS and then talks to Network Manager via Dbus to set the runtime configuration of interfaces. And while doing so, it also preserves existing parameters set by users, such a, as additional IP addresses and routes. And since there is no um, asynchronous notification mechanism from the IMDS, that means that uh, every change in the metadata, uh, to detect a change in the metadata, we need to poll. Uh, and for this reasons, for this reason, uh, an M class setup doesn't need, need need to run as a daemon, uh, but instead it's a um, one-shot configuration tool, and it's restarted periodically by a system D timer. This diagram um, illustrates what happens uh, when an uh, instance boots with Network Manager and an uh, NM Cloud Setup. Initially, there is DHCP from NM uh, to get the IP address. And then um, NM Cloud Setup starts and contacts the IMDS to fetch the network uh, metadata. After that, for each in, um, device that is described in the metadata, uh, it asks Network Manager what is the current configuration of the interface. And then it does a merge of the configuration um, with the metadata to produce a new configuration. This new configuration then is applied to Network Manager. Uh, after some time, an end cloud setup gets restarted. So step number two is repeated. And if necessary, also steps three and four. Uh, this slide shows uh, what are the requests done by an end cloud setup in uh, AWS. Initially, it fetches the list of interfaces. And then for each interface, uh, in parallel, it gets um, the list of uh, IP addresses and also the subnet. And then those parameters are sent to Network Manager. In this case, uh, since there are multiple interfaces, uh, an end cloud setup also sets up um, policy routing. Uh, if this is our instance, we have two interfaces. Each has a IP address. And the routing table looks like this. We have two default routes. So if we get a request for the first address, um, and we send a lamp, uh, the machine uh, sends a reply, it will match the first default route, and so the reply will go out of ETH0. Uh, if we get a request for the second address, um, the reply will also match the first default route, and so the packet we will still go out of ETH0. And this is usually not we, what we want, so an end class setup um, creates uh, a couple of uh, routing rules, and each routing rule selects a different routing table uh, based on the source address of the outgoing packet. And in this way, ah, and sorry, and then um, 
each routing table contains a default um, a default route via the right interface. So in this case, we get uh, the symmetric routing that we want. Um, so there are other existing tools doing a similar job. Those are, for example, uh, EC2Net Utils for AWS or Guest Agent for GCP. Uh, they are provider specific tools. And one problem with those is that they apply the configuration directly in kernel. So if you are using Network Manager, that's a problem because Network Manager is not aware of the changes done by those tool, uh, tools, and so it can over overwrite them at any moment. And we have also Cloud Init, which is a first boot uh, configuration management tool, uh, which does a lot of things um, besides networking. Uh, however, it's not met meant for uh, uh, runtime reconfiguration. So what are the advantages of an cloud setup over those? Um, it fully integrates with Network Manager, so there are no conflicts on who is managing every interface. And also there are some aspects of networking that must be managed in a centralized way. For example, routing, in case you have routing rules, um, or DNS. Also, users on Network Manager do not need to learn different tools to inspect the state of the system. Other advantages are that it supports multiple providers and runtime reconfiguration. So what are the future developments? What can be improved? There is a plan to add support for more uh, providers. For example, uh, there is a merge request to add support for Oracle OCI. And uh, uh, it's, there is a plan also to support IPv6. Any questions? Uh, so the question is, why there is the need to configure each provider separately? Uh, as I said, IMDS is different, works in different ways for different providers. Uh, so the API is different. Uh, so there is no way to develop a tool that works in the same way on different providers. You need to implement a backend for each provider because the API is different. On AWS, GCP, they do have different features, different uh, structure of the API. Yeah, the metadata, if you look at the API specification there, if you, if you need, only need to do the first address, yeah, they do this, you do DHCP, and that works the same everywhere. But to get, for example, additional addresses, um, or on some providers, you can set up, for example, um, secondary mix that uh, works differently in different places. Okay, so the question is there. Uh, I said I said that um, to get to do IMDS, we need to to do DSCP first, but in theory we wouldn't need that because we could send packets over the link local interface. Yes, but to do HTTP, you need a address. I mean, uh, IMDS works over HTTP, so you need to, to do TCP. So you need a uh, configured. Um, or did you mean you we need a link local address? IP la. Yeah, that's possible. Um but it works in this way in providers. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, I know that um, ah, the, is this the default uh, on uh, cloud images, Fedora, RHEL, or what? Uh, 
I know that on some rel images it's enabled by default. Uh, I'm not sure about Fedora or if it's uh, or other providers. I know that it works on AWS. It's enabled. We are out of time. Thanks for attending. <laughs>